Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name is Mike and this is a very impromptu video. I wasn't going to film this watch at all, but um, I've ran into a few little snags along the way. So I thought, what the heck, let's get the camera out and try and at least film the rebuild. So what you're looking at in front of you is a main plate from a Seiko 6106C. It's a 25 joule uh, movement. Most of these uh, 6106s were lesser joules, so this is a bit more of a high ender one. And it's come from a Seiko Sea Lion, nearly said Sea Lion, <laughs> Seiko Sea Lion, and it's 6106-8030. Uh, now these things are very collectible indeed. And this one's been rattling around in my drawer for a couple of years. And finally, I've got round to doing it. So I'm going to show you a lot of photographs as I talk now so you can at least uh, get a picture of what's actually been going on. So we first of all, of course, we'll start with the picture of the watch as it is or as it came to me. And um, the initial problem with this was that the crown was stuck. So you couldn't pull it out to set the time and you certainly wouldn't be able to release it. It was completely and utterly jammed. Uh, I was hoping I'd be able to free that up, um, uh, but it became quite difficult. Now, this watch is a what we call a closed case. So it means that there's no case back, it unscrews. Everything's got to come through the uh, front. So I have to remove the crystal with a what's called a crystal lift, which is quite difficult because... Uh, as it transpires, it looks like I'm the first person in here and the watch was made in 1970. So it's 51 years old as I speak. So I managed to uh, get the crystal lift off, uh, the crystal off with the crystal lift, sorry. And on these, there's a little lever and I'll show you this when we rebuild, uh, which means that you can push down and it will release the uh, stem and the crown. But unfortunately, that didn't happen it was all completely rusted solid and i was unable to move it no matter what and that was a big dilemma because what did i do uh, or what could i do uh, luckily i was able to lift the movement and the dial up just enough to actually see the dial screws and i've done this before actually on a similar watch so i was able to remove the dial and start stripping it through uh, the case and of course you know you can see some of the pictures now but once i got down to the keyless works which i thought once i got to the keyless works i'd be able to remove everything but unfortunately not uh, it was completely and utterly rusted solid i've never seen one quite so bad uh, so i had to use some uh, releasing oil or some it's a bit like wd-40 um, it's called plus gas, uh, the stuff that I use. And I left that on there for 15, 20 minutes and it did its job, but it didn't free up enough. And I actually, in the end, used a bit of brute force and sort of levered on the crown, uh, which was horrible to do, but it was the only way. And eventually all the parts came free. So then I was able to strip it down, of course, and clean. And now we're at this stage. Um, also, what I will say uh, is that when I stripped it down, the um, it went through the, the cleaning machine uh, twice and then it went to the main plate here and, the, and another part of the watch also went through the ultrasonic as well. And then I went to remove the jewels for extra cleaning and I'll show you this in a little video that I took at the time because the jewels were absolutely filthy. So we have a dire shock jewel here from the Seiko and it's extremely dirty as you can see. Now this movement has quite a few of these, got four in total and this is just one of them. I've already removed one of the others and this main plate has been through my cleaning machine and it's also had 20 minutes in the ultrasonic in some Renata which is a, a solvent and yet we still have not managed to shift that dirt. So I'm now going to obviously remove them properly and clean them uh, on their own. I've also got this jewel here. And let's just see if we can get that into focus. And again, same thing. So this, this is a watch from 1970. It's never been serviced before or by the looks of things. And uh, it's full of old oil. So that will all need to be removed and cleaned as well. So uh, 
I had to also then replace a lot of parts. I'm just going to try and bring them in now if I take the autofocus off. This is what's left of the uh, stem and crown. And we've got various bits here that were absolutely rusted solid. These are the main protagonists. And I've got another bit which has just somehow managed to find its way under my, underneath my uh, tripod. Yeah. So, let's just bring this one in as well. So the crown, as you might be able to see, is bent. And that's just from me levering it up. I can probably reuse the stem and hopefully in all my donors, I may have a crown. We have the yoke here that no matter about what I did cleaning wise, it is just rusted and scrap. Exactly the same with the clutch. The clutch is awful. Uh, this is the little setting lever, th uh, the lever, sorry, to re remove the watch, uh, the, to remove the watch, to remove the stem. And um, it's possibly reusable, uh, but I've got a spare. So I'm going to, Treat it to a spare. And then this is the setting lever. And interestingly enough, on this setting lever, I'll show you my replacement because I've got it just here. There it is. So they were exactly the same on a 6106 as a 6119 Seiko. Uh, they are actually one part, um, or in theory, they are one part. These have separated in the rust, so they are also going to go. To the bin so this video really is just going to be about rebuilding the watch as it is so we'll just rebuild it and see how it's going to run see if there's any problems along the way and uh, then i'll obviously sort the crown out and you'll be able to see the finished watch in its entirety at the end so uh, stick around hope you're going to like this one okay so let's get on with this build now if you are new to the channel uh, I am just a hobbyist uh, watchmaker. I've been at this since 2017 and everything that I've learned, I've learned just through doing. To be honest, I've hardly even read any books or anything on watchmaking. I'm generally a practical guy, so I just learn by my mistakes, really. And you will see my mistakes in the videos. So that's the centre wheel. Um, installed i just used a bit of 9010 on the jewel also and we just then need to start putting the screws in and then we'll just drop in the escape wheel too now i have done this movement or this uh, various versions of this movement um, so many times now that uh, i've almost lost count so I can be whipping through this probably, um, making it look easy, potentially. So here's the barrel. I've just put some um, Mobius D5 in the arbor port there. And then just check to make sure the center wheel is turning. Uh, next, actually, is the interesting part, or very, very simple part. The 6106 has hacking. Now let me just put it in first of all. So hacking, of course, or hopefully you know, is when you pull the crown, the uh, second hand stops, so you can actually set it more accurately. And on the Seiko, it is such a simple idea. They just use this brass type of lever. And this little cutout here is where the clutch is. Have I got the clutch? Clutch is here, but you might not be able to see it with the autofocus. So there's a slot in there, and that's where that fits. And we'll see that later on when I build the dial side. So when you pull the uh, stem or pull the crown, it moves the lever, and when you push it, it moves the lever. And you can kind of, well, I can kind of show you here. Look, so it moves. And what's that doing? That bit there is then touching the escape wheel, uh, which is enough to cause the movement to stop. And it's interesting on these particular movements, if you've not done one before, you can get caught out with that because sometimes you think the watch has stopped. Uh, certainly when you're working on the dial side and you put the keyless works in. Uh, I've had this before. Why is the watch not working? Because it's hacked. But you don't realize that at the time and you think something's gone wrong. So 
Uh, just a tip for anybody who might be working on this particular movement. So I just put the extra wheels in now, so that's the third wheel. And I just need to, or I like to just oil this jewel just a little bit. And that's in preparation for the fourth wheel. And here is the fourth wheel. And that's what the uh, second hand will fit to. So we just want to drop that in there. I can just see the third wheels come out of position. There we go. So they're all sitting nice. Or nice enough. Not entirely happy with the escape. But they never line up perfectly at first until you try and put the, the bridge on. But before we do put the bridge, we need to fit the uh, click. Guide the screws in with a peg wood, it makes it a bit easier. Now this um, movement, if I just move that out of the way for a moment, bring in the train bridge. We have the uh, die fix jewels that I, so I think I showed you in, in, in the uh, video, but I can't quite recall. Um, so these I've already oiled. I just turned them over because they're a cap jewel. I use, I'm gonna see if I can get this in shot, this here, which is my version uh, 1A uh, auto oiler. So you just put that in there, pull up the, the, the little lever there, and it will deposit a little droplet of oil in the jewel hole. Although I have to say, I tend to have to roddy coat them afterwards because I seem to get a lot of excess. Also, we have the two on the uh, main plate also, and they are dueling the uh, third wheel and the escape here. So we just need to fit the bridge now, and this can be sometimes really fiddly and sometimes quite straightforward. Which one's it gonna be today? Let's find out. And that didn't go according to plan. I just have to get this click into position like so. And then we can see if the wheels want to uh, sit in the jewels or not. And look at that, first, first go, and they're all in. So it's a bit lucky really, but pleasing nevertheless. You can see the escape wheels go in there. So I just need to secure those with three screws. I don't want you to see my fingers, so I'll do that off camera. So we're on the microscope and we're just looking at the top of the barrel there. Sorry, the barrel arbor. And I'm just going to try and get a little bit of D2. D2? That's what I sell at work. That's a type of tool steel. <laughs> yeah, D5, should I say. So just a little bit in there. That just helps uh, keep the friction down. And then while I'm at it, if I go to here, this is the center wheel uh, jewel. And I'm just going to put some 9. Maybe it's 9010 like so. And then here's the capsules, as you can see, They're already pre-oiled. So we need to um, now just fit the ratchet wheel. So I have to say that I'm really uh, pleased actually to be working on a Seiko again. They are still my favorite brand. Uh, well, I've got lots of favorite brands, but I've got so many Seiko watches and Certainly, if you're starting out in this hobby, these are brilliant to work on. They may look complicated at first, but they really aren't. And they they are made probably with some quite sloppy tolerances because they they are they can take a lot of abuse. I want you to see my hands there. So, yes, you know they are very forgiving. Uh, they're very good to build because uh, they go together quite well. Uh, they're plentiful. They're cheap. 
Um, what else can we say about them? They're just they're just delightful. And if you are, like I say, starting out on the journey, a Seiko is a good place to start. You'll get rewards very quickly, and that will spur you on. And once you've done a few of these, you then might want to go on to some of the Swiss stuff or or other types of watches. There's plenty out there. But I certainly do have a soft spot for these, as you can probably tell. But there we go. So I was just checking that the ratchet is tight and just going to put half a wind in. And you can see that the wheels are turning quite freely there. So the next to go in is the pallets. And I need to oil the pallets before I put them in. So let's show you that as well. We're looking at the exit jewel. Now this isn't really the right way to do this. You should be doing this in the movement, but I find this is the, the easier way for me. And I just want to put a little bit on the jewel, like so, just a drop. That's all it's going to take. You could go to town and you could put it on the entry jewel as well. Fully enough, the Seiko um, service manual tells you to do that, but I, I never bother. Uh, now I'll just have to drop it into the movement and we'll do that on the microscope as well because it makes it a bit easier. So doing this on a microscope makes it a lot easier. I remember doing these on my dining table when I first got into this. Uh, That's the last thing I wanted to do. Too busy talking. Yeah, so, you know, my very first palette was on a 6119 Seiko, which is pretty much the same as this one. And it took me about an hour to get this in using just a visor at the time on my head. I really couldn't see what I was doing. But with a microscope, it is dead simple. So there we go. It's in its jewel. We just need to uh, put the bridge over it, which I'll do off camera. So we're on the dial side now. And yes, there's a little bit of rust there that I can't seem to get rid of. So I'm going to have to live with it. It's not in a vital, vital place. And look, you can see the uh, pallet fork doing its business there. Really, really nice. Uh, these are the other jewels, of course. The Diafix jewels, which are a pain in the backside. That's a fixed one, so I can't do anything with that one at all. Um, not that I know of. If anybody knows how to remove those and all of them, I would be uh, interested to know. And that's the shock jewel on the balance. And I didn't mention, but I have oiled those also. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit in this video because I'm not showing you absolutely everything. This is the uh, center wheel, uh, sorry, the fourth wheel uh, pivot. That's what the second hand is going to sit on. And all I'm going to do now, if I can find it, is oil. So I'm going to use, I need to put a bit of D5. It would help if I took my glasses off. Uh, on the uh, side here, ready for the cannon pinion. And I also like to just put a little bit of d5 on the jewel below that's probably a bit too much and the reason for that is sometimes you get a very you can have a like a stiff crown when you come to turn it and that's because the canopy is a bit tight uh, but i found a bit of oiling on on the jewel here sometimes alleviates that i've just got to mop up my mess because i put way 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 too much on there there we go so I fit the cannon pinion and away we go. So now I have the uh, the bridge on. It's easy to just test. I'll put some wine into the uh, spring and then we just can touch the pallet fork and you just want to see it click from side to side as we are seeing now. So we're already at the moment of truth which is to fit the balance. So here is, you can't see it, here is a balance, and I'm just going to try and describe how I put these on because I know a lot of people struggle with these because I certainly did uh, at the start. On the uh, bottom of a balance, you've got the balance pivot. And what I tend to do, I can't film myself because I haven't got enough cameras. Uh, I'll pick this up and I'll be looking at that as I'm dangling it. So it's hard to describe, but I'll, I'll try to get my head right down and I'm looking this direction. And I'm trying to see the uh, the pivot so that I can drop it into the hole. It should be lining up with the uh, pallet fork. Sometimes it doesn't. And if it doesn't, there's a way to just sort of tweak it. 
Uh, everything you just want to do carefully and gently. You don't want to force anything and you certainly don't want to break the uh, jewel that's on the balance wheel itself. So I'm just going to pick it up. As I say, I'm going to move back. You can probably hear my chair. And I'm just going to try and slide that in. I am hampered a bit as well, which doesn't help. And I'm going to drop it in to position. And I haven't done it. Surprise, surprise. It's like I do need a bit more light. So it is in, or is it there? There we go, so it's spinning. That's all I can say at this stage. I'm relieved, I haven't seen this run at all of course, and that is always the best moment. Knowing that uh, your efforts so far have at least made it to run, you then have to see if it's running good or bad. So whether the moment lasts of uh, pleasure that, yes, I've done it, or, oh God, it's running really badly. So, so far, so good. I'll just tighten that screw up and uh, we'll continue. The free hand here, we've got it on the time graph. And I've just got to change the uh, beat, lift angle, sorry, not the beat error, to uh, 54.5 and then we can click this and let's see what's going to happen. So we've got a trace. And if you can see that, there we go. So that looks pretty decent, actually, if I say so myself. Amplitude, anything over a, a 200 is good on a vintage Seiko. And uh, straight away, the rate's good. And the beta is not too bad. We can, we can just tweak those a little bit. Um, of course, we've got a long way to go yet. We've still got to build the dial side and things can change. But... That is a good indication of health, which means that all of that massive cleaning effort I did on this movement has actually paid off. So very, very pleased. Um, I think I hinted it, hinted at it. I'm not too sure on the uh, jewel little sample, or it might have been in the Facebook group because I've been talking about that on there as well today, that cleaning is probably the most important thing to do. Get your cleaning right and it will pay you dividends. I remember buying a microscope, or the one I use now, probably a year in, and I thought I'd got my cleaning down to a fine art, and yet once I cleaned my parts and I put it on the microscope, I realized <laughs> I was way, way, way wrong. So once you get your cleaning down, honestly, the results start showing themselves. It's cleaning and good oiling. That's really all it is. Of course, you've got to look at uh, wear on parts and things like that. But the general rule of thumb is, is, as I say, cleaning and oiling. So I'm very pleased so far. That is looking nice and healthy. Let's crack on and get all the dial side done. That is the sound of the cannon pinion. Now, hopefully you can see this. That little uh, brass bit, of course, is the hacking lever. And when we put the clutch in, we need to make sure that the clutch is in the middle of that hacking lever. I'm not able to test that particularly at this, this moment in time. I just need to get the crown in. So we'll just build all the uh, keyless works now. Um, and this should be a little bit of fun because this is where we have to put that crazy little lever in. So to start with, I'm going to put a lot of D5 in here. This is where the setting lever is going to sit. And I'm overdoing it just because it was that rusted in before. I certainly don't want that to happen again. So I'm just going to slide it in a little bit. I've then got to turn it. Because this is the little lever 
that has to it just floats i've just booted the micro microphone as you can see i can never quite remember it's been a while since i've done these i think it just goes in here a little bit underneath the setting lever and then you push it all down and it fits Right, change of plan. There we go. Let's hope it stays in. It possibly won't. I'll kind of demonstrate what it does a little bit uh, once I've got it more secure. So in goes the yoke. that just wasn't sitting quite right and I, ideally I wanted to grease there so I'm already in a bit of a pickle Chancing my arm a bit, trying to just grease it on the top. I also just need to put a little bit on that post there. Now, if anyone's going to ask me what grease it is I'm using, my honest answer is I don't actually know. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but it was uh, sent to me by a friend of mine. It's some type of Seiko grease. It's a uh, bright... Uh, orange it comes across yellow probably on the camera i'm not sure and it's stained like crazy if you put it on anything but it's particularly good in keyless works this is the set and lever spring and i just need to secure that with two screws and of course let's do that off camera Okay, so I've fitted the uh, screws and I've also put the stem in with the bent crown and that's to test so we can see that it all goes into the right places and then of course if I turn it over, pull the crown out, the hacking is working. As you can see, the movement stops and starts. So that's absolutely perfect, that's what we want. So let's crack on and get the uh, all the rest of the components on. So next up is the uh, motion works, which is basically how the power from the other side converts into moving the hands. So I'm just going to be oiling with some D5 in various places, like this jewel here for instance. A little bit on there and a little bit on this post here and that is all just to make my life a little bit easier because we're going to fit parts pretty quickly now so 
So there's a little pinion there to drive the uh, crown. We then have the minute wheel. That doesn't want to mesh. There, finally. It's unusual, they're not normally jeweled, but of course this is a high jewel one. Uh, so they normally uh, have a, um, a post to sit on rather than a, a pinion, a pivot even. Too many peas. Okay, this part of the calendar works, and we then also need this wheel just there, and this will be the hour wheel, which also needs to mesh. So all these parts go on pretty quick. And this is one of the uh, column fingers. So it has a little uh, bit there and that controls turning the uh, day wheel or the date wheel over at 12 o'clock. And here's, the, oops, I was going to say here is the other finger, but that one has decided to give me the finger, hasn't it? There we go, load it up again. And that's secured by a particular screw. And it's a screw that's got a shoulder on it, especially. So it's the one that's very easy to identify in this movement. Okay, so I'll just tighten that up. Next up is we have a little bridge to secure the minute wheel. And we always have fun trying to line this one up. First of all, I have to remember which way it goes. I'm just thinking, have I got brain fade? Yes, I have indeed. There we go. And it's unusual. It has a larger threaded screw and on that one, a small screw as well. So I'll just do those ones. Okay, now that's on, we can check to be sure. I am touching, I've took my finger cuts off on these fingers and I shouldn't have. Naughty boy. So you can see the wheels are turning there uh, good enough. So there's a few things still to go, but we're getting close to the end of the main build now. We have this little lever here. And that just sits on two posts. It's never easy to demonstrate this because of these uh, version mover, movement holders I tend to fire the movement out when I do things like this. Because what I'm going to do is demonstrate what this does. So this is uh, a little lever, if you like. So when the day wheel sits on here, underneath the day wheel, there is a star gear. Now I'm going to show you that if I can get hold of it there not sure if that will be in focus but there's a star gear and 
that this lever, when you push the crown to set the uh, day wheel, that lever moves, as you can see, and all it's going to do is push one of those teeth and move it along to the next day. So it's quite straightforward in its principle. It's a part that's easily forgot to put on. I have to say that because I've done that many times. You forget to put it on and then um, when you realise you've got to take half of them and watch apart again. And this is, uh, I don't know what we'll call it exactly, the click. Let's move that into shot for the date wheel. So I'll just line that up and put it in position. And then we can bring in the date wheel. And this is where my fingers, oops, hitting the microphone again, are allowed. There we are, that is all secure. And it's just time to put its protective bridge on or cover. And that'll hold everything in place. And this has four screws, also has a couple of locating pins as well, just to help it. There we go. So I'll put the screws in and then we can uh, put the date disc on. So the cover is on and all we need to do is put the date disc on and this little lever here is going to come into play as well. So it's got a very nice date wheel here. The full words and on this now all I want to do is pay attention to where that lever was because I just need to pull it back through this gap here. Just using an old oiler there we go and then that is engaged in the teeth of that star wheel and remains is the c-clip which holds it on and make sure if you're doing this that you put the chamfer edge down the champ oops it's just flown away that's clever yeah so it has a chamfer on it it goes round and i've been in these before where the chamfer is facing up because that's kind of what you would think it needs to do to make it look flush but the chamfer is actually there to allow you to remove it to start with you can get a screwdriver underneath uh, to pull it up so we just push that on and that is it we should just be able to now quick set and the quick set's not working at all there we go it is now and I've got focus lock on. It's particularly difficult to do. But you can see it is changing there. So I just have to build the auto works themselves now. And that's a pretty easy job. It's the uh, what they call the magic fingers or the pull lever. Very simple design, yet very, very effective. So we have just uh, two fingers, if you like, here on either end. And this is an eccentric um, motion here, and that makes it actually wind. This particular gear here which sometimes is a bit of a pain to fit it'll be definitely a pain on camera because I've got to try and get it in here and then get the fingers engaged to it at the same time there we go like so and it has a little retainer And I just have to put a screw in either of those holes there. 
So I just now have to fit the uh, auto works themselves and just want to line it up as best you can with the holes like so and you can see it's got a bit of a wobble I need to be way off sometimes it helps just to put a little wine in the spring there we go and then it falls into its position I've just got three screws so of course I'll do those off camera and that's the auto works done then as well and now I just remembered as well that I'll have to put the uh, rotor on because this is a closed case that once I put it in the case itself I won't be able to access the back at all I don't like having the rotor on for when I put the hands and dial on it makes the thing spin around a bit it can be annoying so just giving it a quick test make sure it is winding of course again because once it's in position we can't access it easily so it'll now be just a case of flipping it over we'll put the nice dial on and the hands and then we're kind of done other than casing so a few things to uh, point out first what's so cool about this of course we've got the full uh, day and it's kind of running weird isn't it and that's because here is the dial the day window is at the nine o'clock so when these go around it almost looks like it's going upside down and there's a couple of little cool features as well the dial has a um, spacer here is the spacer and it has writing on it which is basically saying uh, lever for unlocking stem which is this uh, you need to sort of position it in the right place I've never seen that before and that's really really cool it's pretty self-explanatory because the dial has feet and I have to get the feet in the right place of course and then once I've done that I can just drop it on the movement so the feet are in position and I've just realized of course I've got to unwind the dial uh, feet screws because I will have tightened those up for cleaning So here is the case. I wanted to restore this case, uh, but I can't. It uh, has this. I'm take the lock off again. Has this lock, this lip around here, and uh, this is sort of pressed in this this ring here, and I can't get it out. It has a locking mechanism, and if you can see that moving, that's what secures the movement into the case. Um, I was hoping to remove it all so I could re-brush the top here and actually make this look really nice. Uh, but I just can't, for the life of me, get that out. Uh, anyone got any ideas? Let me know. Um, I think it's being pressed in and you'd really have to force it to get out and I don't want to break it. Uh, so I have to live with it for the time being. Okay, so for the stem... 
And the crown, I'm very fortunate in that I've gone through all my spares. I found one. It's not quite identical. Uh, it's a Seiko one all the same, and it's pretty much the same size. So all I'm gonna do is take this one off, and it is on really tight. I tried to do it with my fingers and it wouldn't work. So because I've already kind of ruined it, just gonna bring in a pair of pliers, make sure the pin vise is really tight. And grab hold of it and then give it a good good old turn. A bit off camera there. And there we go. And that will just come straight off. And I'll be able to thread the other one on. Uh, but I will also be putting some thread locker on. I'll just bring that in. Uh, so I'll just put a little splodge on the end and then screw the uh, crown on like so be dead straightforward um, because the stem is always all I can't even say it is already size uh, that crown is like I say the same length as well so it'll be perfect it's going to be absolutely spot on so I'll do that we'll fit the crystal and then we can conclude the video because we're going to then see the watch in its uh, finished condition Welcome to the end of the video. Normally I'd be showing you lots of different photos of the uh, finished watch, all looking very nice. Uh, the trouble is with this one, it has a very, very reflective crystal and every time I've tried to take photographs, I just can't seem to get the detail. So I just figured, well, I'll have to put it back on the bench and show it you this way. So I've matched it, as you can see, with this black leather strap with a bit of white stitching to match those lines on the dial. Uh, the case is pretty cool case back is extremely faded this probably won't come out on camera it's really difficult to see the C line is there in the middle and um, clearly it's been worn considerably over its life which is good to see in many respects isn't it let's face it so there we are that's what it looks like and now time for a little mini confession because I've made an absolute critical mistake and I'm still kicking myself now, actually. Uh, if you remember, I put the stem and I had a, um, a spare crown or a crown that was the same size and everything else. So I fitted it in and, of course, it seemed to work in the two positions. So I could, um, you know, change the time and stuff. However, with these uh, 6106 movements, to actually change the day and the date, of course, you have to push the crown in. And when I go to push the crown in, I can't push the crown in at all. It is completely solid. And the reason it's completely solid is because it's right at the end of the uh, pendant tube there. And there's no wriggle room for it to push forward. So that's a major mistake because I absolutely didn't notice it until I came to wear the watch for a day. Wanted to set the date and the uh, day. Of course, I couldn't. And the frustration part of that, of course, is to rectify that, to actually remove the stem, I've got to remove the bezel, which isn't too difficult, and use the crystal lift to get the crystal off. And the crystal lift, I've got one here. Uh, it's one of these things. It's like a big giant claw, and you can adjust it to grab. And it grabs it quite well, but to pull it off, I have to really pull quite hard on this one. But, sorry, what the crystal lift does is sort of crushes the side in equal measure, to sort of reduce the tension ring enough for it to come off. And I never know how hard to tighten these things without breaking them. Uh, so I go as much as I dare, but it just seems to be really tight. And I, 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 you run the risk of ruining the dial basically. So I'm worried 
I will fix it at some point, but certainly not at this stage. So anyway, there we go. That is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this impromptu one. I know it's another Seiko, but I do like them. And this one is no exception. It has come out very, very well. So if you like what you saw, then please give the uh, video a like. It does help with the Google algorithm, and I need all the help I can get right now. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, of course, please subscribe to the channel. And if you are a regular here and you want to help uh, the channel along in any way you can, then please visit my tool sale links page where you could buy the tools that I use and I will earn a small commission for that. Uh, I've got a new thing called buy me a coffee. You can click on that and make a small donation if you wanted to, one-off or a, or a subscription. Uh, all of the, the money that will be raised uh, will go towards more projects, hopefully more giveaways and certainly some more tools. And at the moment I'm trying to save up for potentially a different camera because I'm getting a bit frustrated with the setup that I'm using. So any help would be great, but don't force yourselves. There's no need to if you don't wish to, of course. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to join the Facebook group, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. Over 9,000 people in there now, all watch mad. Some of them are professionals. Uh, some people are just hobbyist watchmakers and other people are just watch collectors. So join the fun. It's a worldwide group and you will get your watch fixes in there on a daily basis. I'll see you very soon in the next video. Of course, I've got more and more planned coming so uh, stay tuned for those so don't actually forget to hit the bell button because that way you will be notified when i upload new content bye for now guys